Hey there! Remember this beauty? It's our beloved Panasonic 3DO, the crown jewel of 90s gaming. It was running like a dream, but now, well, it's more like a nightmare. It was happily spinning our favorite games and CDs, and the next day, nada, zilch, zero. It wouldn't read anything. But fear not! Today, we're gonna roll up our sleeves and dive into the guts of this classic console. We're gonna revive it, and maybe give it a modern twist. So grab your tools, hit the subscribe button, and let's get this 3DO back into action. Because no console deserves to be left behind. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. So here's the Panasonic 3DO FZ1. Recently it stopped reading discs, so I thought why not install an ODE, an optical disc emulator. To open it up there's four screws underneath, and to get to them you'll need a posi driver with a long shaft. And even this screwdriver barely makes it. Now it can pull off the top. Easy does it. <gasps> While there are screws on the CD drive, you don't actually need to remove these, as the shield can be pulled straight off. Huh. Turning the 3D around, we can see the ribbons for the CD drive. They're easy to remove, but they're easy to damage too, so you need to be careful. And we'll insert them into a cheap ODE that we picked up for $38 on AliExpress. We installed the firmware to a USB, and initially it looks to be a success. But if we listen carefully, it sounds all wrong, as if the gain knob has been cranked right up. So it looks like there's something wrong with this 3DO. As this system was released back in 1993, the issue is very likely to be the capacitors. Luckily, it seems that none of them are leaking, but due to the system's age, they may not be outputting the correct values. On the main board, we can see the battery, this is for saves, and capacitors are scattered around. Those that are related to power and sound are found in this clump here, so replacing these three should fix our issues. We got a 3DO cap kit from console 5, so let's get stuck in. Adding flux allows us to control the solder better, and we started to remove the old caps with the soldering iron and pliers. But eventually, we found it easier to use our fingers. Give it a bit of a clean using contact cleaner. Then we can solder in the new caps. Alright, I lost the footage! Ah, Christ! Now the new ones are in, I'm going to mark them with a red pen. I can give it a test. So now that it sounds great, we can either leave it, or do a proper job and do the whole thing. We bought a fairly cheap desoldering iron, and... Yeah! It's like a soldering iron and a solder sucker stuck into one. one two, three. It makes removing the caps much easier, Then we can continue the process. Now let's get back to the soldering. Uh, I lost it! Great. Let's move on to the battery. For this, there are three points to desolder, and it's not difficult to remove. Just remember to get the same one. No, it's the wrong one. We got the correct battery, but not one with three prongs. So rather than order more stuff, we decided to use some cable instead. Even though the 3DO probably only needs one positive connection, we split the terminal to provide for two. And then one for negative. As we don't want this battery shorting out the board, we're going to wrap it tight with electrical tape. And then solder it to the board. And we have a fully recapped 3DO. Let's give it a test. After checking over the capacitors, we decided to put all our blame on the cheap AliExpress ODE. There are reports that it doesn't last forever, so we decided to get a proper one from the Crown Arcade Shop. This one sold for $60, and it's the next generation of ODE board that uses the schematics and code from FCare. And this looks far better than the one from Ali, and it's designed to fit flush with the 3DO itself. So the USB stick with the operating system goes in here, and this switch is probably used for firmware updates. On the back there's some sticky tape, Let's see if it works. 
Yes, it does. Oh, yeah. But is it sound sorted? Very yes. The ODU is fit flush with the case. And finally, we have a working 3DO. With a working 3DO, we can get to play some games. And you can't really get much better than using a Sony PVM. The holy grail of 14 inch CRTs. The 3DO controller we have has a very long cable and the design is very similar to that of a Mega Drive crossed with a Super Nintendo. We've got the ABC on the front, two shoulder buttons and a port to daisy chain other controllers. But rather than use that with its long and sticky cable, we're going to use this blue retro 3D dongle. They're around $15 on AliExpress, but we can pretty much connect any Bluetooth control to this. So let's give it a try. To pair we need to press the button on the dongle, and then follow up with the controller. Now we're good to go. Road Rash. Doom, with an exceptional soundtrack. Unfortunately, this version is pretty slow. Oh yeah! With the PVM we have a button for underscan and overscan. If we push a button twice we get the middle ground, and using these we can select how much of our screen is filled up. Quarantine is pretty much what you'd get if you crossed Interstate 76 with Crazy Taxi. It was also released on MS-DOS, but if you wanted this on PlayStation or Saturn, you need to find the Japanese version. Arguably one of the best ports to come to the 3DO, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo utilizes CD audio, making this an incredible version of a classic title. But of course, we need to play this two-player. Not only does this dongle allow one player, it also supports a second. And to do so, we need to hold the pair button for two seconds and it'll connect up. And believe it or not, this can support up to eight controllers, so it can play all the multiplayer games instead of spending a fortune on used 3DO pads. And if you're no good at lemmings with a controller, this dongle can do something really cool. You can connect to it using Bluetooth, update it from the GitHub website, and also pair it up to a Bluetooth mouse or trackball. So now we can play lemmings as intended. Our 3DO is back, baby. Amazing. Here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. These guys are incredible. And if you'd like to help support our work, you can use the QR code or check the links down below. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please slam that like button, much like I did Beverly in the holodeck.